Okay, so this will be part four of our currency converter program. I want to show you where we are so far. So I'm going to go ahead and show my converter form. So it starts up, and you'll notice I've made a few little changes here. I've preloaded these text boxes with US dollar, and I've preloaded the amount field with one dollar. You can just do that in your form designer. Just go into the text fields and just enter these values. These are just text fields. You'll also notice that I've got the US dollar listed at the top of my currency list because a person may want to change um, from a particular currency to US dollar in these options here. And that was not showing up on our list because the original list on our sheet does not include the US dollar. So uh, we'll take a look at that. So let's say I want to change from US dollars to euros. So I'll click down here on euros and hit the pick button for the convert to. So I'll click there and I've got a little dialog box that just pops up that tells me, okay, this is coming up from row 16 here. Okay. So it's got euro in there and I hit convert and it converts and it says it's worth 81 cents. And if we look down here on the sheet, we'll notice that the euro is worth 81 US dollars as of today. So uh, that works pretty well. And then I also can click up here and say, well, uh, what if we do euro to euro? Again, that's 16. Um, that ought to give me, when I hit convert, I ought to get a dollar down here. Let's see if it works. So indeed it worked. The formatting is not perfect here, but uh, euro to euro ought to give you just one euro is equal to one euro. So that worked. Um, I also could change it to, now that I have dollar in my list here, I can change it from a euro to a dollar. And that's telling me it's at the zeroth position there. So euro to dollar convert is buck twenty three, and indeed that's what it shows here. So let's go talk about some of these options that we're some of these differences. So to start right out, I'm going to just talk about a few things that I've had to adjust on this code to make it work. Um, I'm going to go right up here to the top. This is my convert button. So my convert button, I do a couple of things here. One is I just wanted to get the various currency names and and I didn't actually do anything with them at this point but you'll notice that I wrote a couple of functions or actually I wrote one function that's called get currency name and I just pass in what number the currency is here and it gets me the currency name and again I call it for the get from and I pass in the row number I'm not sure if this will work for US dollar so I might have a bug right there then I declare dollars and I declare other because anytime I want to convert from one currency to another, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the same way every time. I'm going to first convert it to dollars and store it in a dollars variable. And then I'm going to have, a, and notice that's a function call, convert to dollars, and I pass it which currency I'm converting to dollars. And then I'm going to convert it from dollars to a particular currency, and I pass in how many dollars I want to convert. I have to pass in the number of dollars because I've just calculated that in the line above. So I'm going to do this every time, and so it'll convert it to the other currency. If the other currency happens to be dollars, it'll still work. It'll just convert dollars to dollars. But I'm going to do this every time. So I could convert from euros to pounds. So basically it would say first convert the euros to dollars, then convert the dollars to pounds, and then it should give me the correct number of pounds. And then I just put this in my in my result box. I put the other value in the result box. So that's the other currency. Okay, so that's just the basic idea. So you got some functions you could write there if you wanted to. There are three little functions that you could write. This one right now is not really being used for anything, I don't think. But you can still write it just for fun. Now I had to make some adjustments here because I've added the dollars to the top of my to the top of my list box and I also want dollars to always be a currency index of zero so that I can check for that to see if they're just using dollars and so I've got a couple of things going on here so first thing is uh, you'll notice that uh, now that I've added dollars to the top of my list box I only want to offset by one so I grab the current list index when they click the pick button and I offset that by one to get the currency from but I have to check and see did the user uh, did the user click on dollar? Because if the user clicked on dollar, the currency, the currency from would be one. The zeroth index in the list box plus one. That would give me one. And I always want the dollar currency to have an index number of zero. So I had to set that to zero to make everything work right. So here's my little message box that's popping up. I'll turn that off. And the button pick 
two click is the same thing. Um, now because dollars at the top, I only have to add one to get my offset onto my sheet currencies. And I had to check and see if the currency two value was a one. If it is, I want to set it back to zero because that's what I always want it to be for dollars. And there's my message box on that one. I comment that one out. So a couple little changes right there. Uh, on the user initialization form, I got some interesting things going on here. Uh, one interesting thing is I wanted to be able to get the list box to actually have dollars, the item at the top of the list, selected when I first run the program. So what I did was I took my list box and I set the focus on the list box. Then I said set the selected item zero, set that to true, and then I set the list index to zero. Now let's just take a look at what I'm talking about. When these three lines of code execute, I'm thinking the very first item on my list box should be selected. Well, let's take a look at that. So you'll notice the very first item in the list box is selected. So immediately if the user wanted to, they could hit the pick button and it would actually put US dollar in there. In other words, let's just empty it out and hit pick and notice it puts US dollar. So if you don't do that, you don't have anything selected in your list box and a person could hit the pick button and nothing selected and the program will error out because you're assuming the user has selected an item before they hit the pick button. So by doing those three lines of code, it selects the item on the list box so the user can just immediately hit the pick button. So that's what that little piece of code is all about that does that. So uh, let me just scan on down here. I'm not going to show you everything, but uh, let me go down to the bottom of my code here. So here's a convert from dollars and the convert to dollars. Basically the idea here is you're passing in a currency number. You grab the amount from the input box that the user has typed in the amount. And if the currency number is zero, meaning dollars, and you're converting two dollars, you just return the amount immediately because you don't have to convert anything. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to convert it by taking the amount and multiplying it times what's in the cell for that currency number in column three. What's in the cell for column three? We're converting two dollars. Well, that's column C. So if you're converting something to dollars, you want to pick what's in column C. So I go ahead and multiply it times what's in column C. That's the conversion factor to convert to dollars, so column 3. And then I just use the round method. The round function actually in Visual Basic allows you to round to a certain number of decimal places. Now on the function to convert two dollars, you'll notice I had to pass in the currency number that I was trying to convert from, and I had to pass in the dollar amount. So I have passed in a row number, that indicates the row on my spreadsheet that holds the currency conversion factor, and I pass in the dollars amount. And I checked again to see if the currency number was zero. If the currency number is zero, I don't need to do any conversions, so I just immediately return the dollar amount that was passed in. If the row number is not zero, then what I need to do, of course, is I need to find the conversion factor on the sheet here. So I say dollars times the conversion factor. And you'll notice this time the conversion factor is in column 2, or column B. And I multiply it times that conversion factor. And again, I round it to two decimal places. And so this function then will return the conversion from dollars to some other currency. And it could be dollars. Um, get currency name. If currency number equals zero, then return US dollar. Yeah, that looks like that's going to work just fine. Otherwise, it says get the currency name from the cells, the correct currency number, column one, and that returns the currency name. So that works too. So take a look at these changes and uh, try to uh, see what you can do to get your uh, currency converter working. Thanks.